Hi, welcome to class for Friday, April 9th. This is your asynchronous time. Um, today, what you are going to do is watch this video. There's two parts to the video. One is my visual explication of She Sweeps with Many Colored Brooms. And the second part is a slideshow, essentially, of my visit to Emily Dickinson's house. We're going to be spending a lot of time with Dickinson's writing at the beginning of the poetry unit. So I wanted you to be able to envision who and what we're talking about. After you watch the video, there is a biography article for you to read, as well as a Google form assignment. The Google form assignment does include some questions about this video. Uh, so I want you to watch this whole video so you know who and what we're talking about. Um, in the, the um, She Sweeps visual explication, I do mention that uh, we talked about Wizard of Oz the other day. That was only in a couple of my classes. So if you get to that part and you say, wait, what did I miss about Wizard of Oz? Don't worry about it. You didn't miss it. I didn't do it with all of my classes. So you're going to watch the visual explication. And keep in mind that normally in our poetry unit, I'm not going to tell you that specific poems mean specific things. Um, I believe, as Walt Whitman did, that the reader makes their own meaning. But you've got to be able to back up the meaning. However, She Sweeps with Many Color Brooms is one of the few where I'm actually going to tell you what it means uh, because I want you to see how I got to that conclusion. I know it's a pretty difficult poem, and so I wanted to walk you through it and you could see how I use the techniques to get to that solution. All right. Um, as always, my office hours today are 11 to 12, and I will post that in the Google Classroom when it comes time to do that. If you have any questions, since poetry is pretty challenging, I assume some of you will have some questions and need some clarification. After that, have a good weekend. She Sweeps with Many Colored Brooms by Emily Dickinson. A crayon explication by Mr. Reiner. Now this version that I used for today's video has the word how right here. And I'm actually used to the word now being there. So if I say the word now and it says how, that's just out of habit. In class, I would actually emphasize that we should read each poem twice out loud. For the sake of this video, we're just gonna read it once and then we're gonna go through line by line. She sweeps with many colored brooms and leaves the shreds behind. Oh, housewife in the evening west, come back and dust the pond. You dropped a purple raveling in, you dropped an amber thread. And now you've littered all the east with duds of emerald. And still she plies her spotted brooms, and still the aprons fly, till brooms fade softly into stars, and then I come away. All right, so first, I notice that there's a she involved in this. I don't know who the she is. It doesn't sound, if it's not in first person, uh, although I know at the end it does come to first person, uh, we know that's a different character that's not the speaker. Oh. So there she is. I drew a she. She sweeps with many colored brooms. And this makes me think of somebody sweeping up a bunch of dust, or if somebody in my class knocked over one of the hole punchers, there would be all these different colored dots all over the floor. And I'd have to get the broom and I'd sweep it up into one spot. So there used to be a lot of color spread out, and now it's just in one pile. She leaves the shreds behind. This tells us that there's still some pieces of the many colors spotted around where she already swept. So she didn't get everything, just like what happened with a hole puncher in my classroom. Oh, housewife in the evening west. Those are some important clues right there. The mention of west is interesting, and the fact that it says evening does give us a clue. So here I've drawn north, south, east, and west, and there is my housewife in the west, smiling away. Come back and dust the pond. This is significant for a couple reasons. We've got the idea of a cycle or a return. So she is uh, going away apparently because she's leaving things behind, but she, we do want her to come back. And it does mention the pond. So here I drew a pond on the bottom of my picture. You dropped a purple raveling in. She's in the west, and so she's left shreds behind in the east. And there I drew my purple. You dropped an amber thread. Amber is an orangish yellowish color. So I filled in some orange and yellow here, going from the east to the west. With duds of emerald. Duds means spots. And emerald, for those of you who watched Wizard of Oz, which we mentioned the other day too, emerald is green. So now I'm going to draw in some dots of green. There they are. 
and still she plies her spotted brooms. So this is telling us she's not done yet. She's still hanging out. And still the aprons fly. So there's a lot of stuff still happening. Lots of movement and lots of color still happening. Until the brooms fade softly into stars. Now I'm going to connect the stars with the evening. And that does sound familiar considering what I just drew with the emerald. And then I, so there's the speaker, we're in first person, which tells us that the she at the beginning is not the same as the I. The I is not the housewife. And then I come away. So once all the colors fade into stars, and there's not a lot of color left besides the duds of emerald, she goes home. She goes away, just like she would at night. And so all of these clues put together make me think of a sunset. We've got the sun moving from east to west, just like it does all day. Part of the sky is covered in dark color with duds of emerald and stars and evening. We see the colors fading over the ocean and we watch the sun go away. The end. We're going to take a few minutes to have an introduction to Emily Dickinson, as well as the place where she was born, where she lived, and where she died. Emily was born in 1830 and died in 1886. This is the only known 100% sure authentic photograph of Emily Dickinson. It was taken in 1847 when she was 16 or 17. There are a couple paintings of her as a child along with her siblings. However, there is no authenticated photo of her after 1847. Ironically, because of how she dressed for most of her adult life, she came to be known as the woman in white. You're going to read more about that in the biography article you have. However, a lot of people think of her covered in black because this being the one photo we have of her. This is, uh, these are some pictures that I took on my visit to the homestead in July of 2017. It is now the Emily Dickinson Museum. And there's this house, which is the original one on the property. This is the house where Emily lived. And then a few hundred yards away is her brother's house. I'm not going to show you that one just for the sake of time. Uh, and you will see up here in the corner, this is Emily's bedroom. So these are the windows that she would look out of as she wrote and lived her life. The homestead is right there where it says Emily Dickinson Museum. It's located in Amherst, Massachusetts near Boston. It was built in 1813 for Emily's grandparents who lived there during her childhood as well. Emily was born in that house in 1830 and she died in that house in bed in 1886. Outside of the house, you'll still find gardens, which was one of her main uses of her time. Besides writing, she loved plants. She loved the animals she would find in the gardens. She kept collections of different plants she would find. And as you read her writing, you'll see that nature is a huge part of her writing. And so there are still our gardens maintained on the property. Also, one of the most neat things that I saw when I visited was one of the original pages of her pressed plants. And that's Emily's writing, identifying these plants that she had collected and that she put into a notebook with hundreds and hundreds of others of her collections. She did not interact very much with people, but she did interact with nature a lot. As I said, up in the corner here is Emily's bedroom that you're going to see in just a minute. This is a space you're going to read about also in the biography article. Um, I'm standing where I took this picture right outside of Emily's bedroom door. And this is where Emily would stand if she didn't want to have face-to-face -face contact with people. She was the original distance learner. She would hide behind the stairs so that she could talk to people that were down in the uh, entranceway. She could have visits with friends and family without actually having seeing them. So this was a place for her to hide while still being social a bit and interacting a little bit. Here is her bedroom. Uh, this is the bed in which she died. It's a very small room. It's hard to imagine spending most of your life within this room. I guess maybe until now where we actually have the experience of being confined mostly to our homes. Uh, so as much as I'm making a joke of it, it was very unusual for someone to spend so much time just in their room. 
Uh, the dress that you see there is one of Emily's original dresses. I believe there's only one or two that uh, still exist. And again, she mostly wore white, unlike that picture we saw that she's famous for. She mostly wore white. Here you'll see a replication, not the actual one, a replica, excuse me, replica of the desk that she would write at. And then when she would write her poem, she would put it in the box down on the ground there. If I'm recalling correctly, both of them are owned, the originals are both owned by Amherst College. These are replicas. However, they give you a very good idea of what she was working with. You may remember last month when I saw you in person, we actually saw Abraham Lincoln's desk where he wrote letter, um, sorry, uh, where he wrote the Gettysburg Address. Uh, and so these very small desks were kind of the norm at that time. And so they have it set up there so it looks like she's been writing. She would sit and look out the window, write her poems, and then put them in the box on the floor there. Also, originally, as you can tell over on the right of your screen, there was a fireplace there before the stove was put in. Uh, so that was a pretty good spot because it was warm. She had a view. And that's where she would do her writing, thinking about the world that she barely went out into.